work in stratigraphy, which is the study of the rock layers in the Earth, and I try to understand the historical natural events and the sequence in which they occurred over thousands and millions of years ago. This allows me, for example, to tell when dinosaurs were around and if an asteroid hit the Earth, whether that occurred after the extinction of dinosaurs or at the time of their extinction. Here, we are trying to put a hypothesis forward. The layers that I study are from the surface of the seafloor, and the hypothesis is that the sequence of events that we try to get from the sedimentary layers are not the same of the original proper sequence, the way they originally occurred. In stratigraphy, we have layers. Some of them are below, some of them are above. Those above are younger, those below are older. This is called the principle of superposition, which means by looking at these layers, we are basically looking at the passing of time, at the passage of time. Now, what if these layers were shuffled exactly like a deck of cards can be shuffled? which means a card can be taken entirely from a position and put either down or up. To test this hypothesis, we have to rely on the principle of superposition, which means if the layers are shuffled in the nature, then the passing of time would also be shuffled, which means the representation of time. Can they be naturally shuffled? Can the layers do that? Is it possible, like a deck of cards? Indeed, this is possible because there are some tiny organisms, like small worms, that live on the seafloor and then take some parts of the sediment from the seafloor, dig down, go to a level that is a bit deeper, and spread that sediment around. And from this new level, they take other sediment and maybe go up or down and spread it again and again. So this activity of the organism is exactly like shuffling of a deck of cards. This can happen in nearly discrete units, which means without completely mixing everything. So we look at the final shape of the sediment. It is still in the shape of thin layers or lamina. Even laterally, these organisms don't have a big range of action, which means all that they do is to expand laterally for a few centimeters or maybe tens of centimeters. But in the past, there have been many of these organisms, which means the activity of all of them together would have made a network and that would have affected a large area of the seafloor. It is true that if the sediment is shuffled, we should not rely on the principle of superposition to detect time, but sometimes we look at the sediment, that's all what we have. We don't see the effect of shuffling, and so we have to rely on the principle of superposition because we don't know if shuffling really has occurred. Some may argue that if shuffling of time has really occurred, then anyway, we should be able to detect it by doing radiometric dating. So we check how many particles have been completely transformed in the sediment by decay, and this is used as an indicator of the passing of time. Unfortunately, this method doesn't work in every single case of shuffling, doesn't work well. Why not? Because we cannot sample every single lamina to apply this dating method. This would be very expensive. Even when we apply this method, and even when we get a linear trend of time based on the results of this method, shuffling may still have occurred. This is because we learn from the deck of cards that repetitive shuffling would create a new order. So we cannot have a total confidence in the principle of superposition, even when we don't see the effect of shuffling in the sediment. And if we see this effect, even more, we can estimate the entropy, which means tell something about the degree of disorder 
of time. This is because different organisms would do the shuffling in completely different ways. So when we do a detailed reconstruction of the history of the Earth, you know we study the history of climate, we study the history of life on Earth, when we go to find details, we have to be aware that these reconstructed events may have been, in some cases, shuffled one with respect to another. This is especially true if we talk about thin lamina representing short time scales up to a thousand or few thousands of years. Is really time linear in geology? We have to think about it. Thank you very much.